Well, we've done a lot of work lately focusing on the user experience, right? Getting <clears throat> commonly requested features like sorting, filtering, paging, even having pages remember their query string parameters, <clears throat> or last settings, I should say, <laughs> right? Now we're kind of shifting gears a little bit and focusing very much on the back end, stuff that happens in the background that the user is hardly even aware of, even though it's still very, very important. As I say here, a couple of the most common requirements that uh, you end up often having to deal with, right? Auditing and concurrency control. Now, <clears throat> auditing is not totally new to you. You've done some work with auditing before in your database courses, right? <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, just a quick comment that, uh, you know, there's quite a range of different auditing systems that have been put in place in the real world. Uh, the very high-end critical systems, often, you know, things like financial, medical, and so on, you know, they go to a great length. They audit basically the before and after version of every record, every time any change is made, and so on. So, you know, tremendous audit trail is available there to track anything down, right? Now, rarely do we need to go to that uh, extreme point of view. Uh, but, you know, at a minimum, uh, basic auditing is very, very commonly put into place. And as I said, this is the style that you've had some experience with yourself. Uh, maybe just before I go on, I'll mention that we don't have time to squeeze it in. There's so much else to cover this term. But next term, I usually do a learning moment, as I call them, uh, during a project course where we'll do an example of a much more extensive auditing system to track basically changes to anything, even related entities and so on and so forth. But for now, basic auditing, right? You've done it. You know what it's about. Created by, created on, updated by, updated on, right? Basically, who made the record and when, and who's the last person, the last person, who do I blame, <laughs> right? The last one who touched it, right? We don't even track you know, the whole history of every change that people have made, just who last uh, is responsible for the current state of the record itself, right? Okay. Now, as I said, you've done some examples. You've, in the past, you made some stored procedures where you pass parameters to make sure you properly updated some basic audit fields and things like that. But we're going to take a very different approach. And in fact, you're going to love it, right? And the framework core is great for this kind of thing. Yeah? In the context of our MVC application, the design pattern we're putting in place here, we're going to find that a few quick changes and a you know a couple dozen lines of code, it almost fully automates the whole process for us of <clears throat> getting the basic auditing in place. Yeah, who doesn't like that, right? Okay. What we're going to do in a nutshell is we're going to make an audible class. Now, first we'll define an interface for it, right? Make sure the audible class implements that interface, and then. Any entity we want to be auditable, we just inherit from the audible class. That combined with a you know, couple dozen lines of code in our DB context, and that's it, okay? And we're set up to work with the, you know, once we, we're also gonna plan ahead to make sure this will work with our security system when we eventually got that in place, the identity system so we know the username of whoever's logged into the app, and so we can use that to track who's creating and updating records in the meantime, we'll just say unknown, or maybe it was just from seed data itself, right? But, you know, basically, a few lines of code, and we'll be done. And that's basically all there is to auditing. Really, really simple to get that basic auditing in place. Okay. Just to finish our discussion, the other topic we're going to deal with, and these are the final two topics, really, before the uh, midterm break of the course that you're going to be responsible for on the test as well. Concurrency control, right? We've talked about it before. All multi -sys all multi-user systems have to think about concurrency control. If the same users, multiple users, are opening and editing the same record at the same time, <laughs> and just saving their changes over top of each other, it just leads to mayhem. Whose version is the one there? People aren't even aware that others have changed theirs. You're not aware that you're changing somebody else's recent changes, and so on and so forth, right? <clears throat> you know, we've talked about all these scenarios in the past as well. Someone else has made changes to the data you're editing, okay? The changes you're about to make might be different, and if you're aware of the changes other people have made and so on and so forth, right? So we do need to actually have concurrency control for any entity that gets edited on a regular basis, okay? Things like lookup values that are changed virtually never. <laughs> yeah, you might not have to worry about it there, but in most cases, it's something we do need to be concerned about. Now, the two most common approaches, as I mentioned here, 
compare all values. See if anything has changed in any property of a record before you allow the change to happen, right? Before you allow it to save over top of an existing version of a record, right? So it's a lot of work comparing all the values, okay? It's a lot of code to write to, well, it's not so much the code, it's a lot of actual operations to carry out, okay? It can slow down the performance. Sorry, compared to the other approach we're gonna do here, and that is to use a timestamp or version, right? A row version, as they're sometimes called, okay? We add one of these to the entity or the table, whichever way you wanna think about it, right? And it, the idea is it would be updated every time there's a change to the record, okay? Any field in the record, any change to the data, we update our row version, right? Or our timestamp. And that's uh, another way to do it. The disadvantage is that's one extra property that you're sticking in there, one extra field you're storing in the database. But performance-wise, you know, the cost-benefit usually works out in the favor of doing this approach because, uh, you know, it's much faster to compare two things than maybe a couple dozen things, right? Now, thinking about that then, most of the major databases in the world, SQL Server certainly among them, automatically has a built-in timestamp, row version, whatever you want to call it. They call it timestamp for the most part still. Uh, it's a special field that automatically updates itself. <laughs> well, it's not doing it itself, but the system automatically updates uh, these uh, concurrency control fields for us, auto uh, and we don't even have to do anything. It just happens, right? SQLite is the database we happen to be using. SQLite, you know, has a nice... Uh, uh, way to store like a uh, the same kind of byte array that we would use for a SQL Server timestamp, but it does not update it. There's no mechanism built into SQLite for automatically updating a concurrency field, okay? That's not a problem really though. We can do a little bit of work and create triggers to do that update for us, right? So triggers come to the rescue to get us around the limitation of SQLite itself. Okay, so that's basically our discussion. We'll get into the demo now, and we'll build both basic auditing and concurrency in our demo as we go.